All right, so I'm Rod Nelson. Uh, I'm uh, building uh, what I'm calling the Northwood Phoenix Railway. You've probably seen my first two videos. Um, what we're going to do here today is I'm going to show you how I lay my cork. Uh, it's pretty quick and fast. Uh, anyway, so uh, I'm going to get on the other side of the camera here and show you what we're doing. Okay, so I have one piece already down. I don't know if you can see them very well, but right here, here, and here are key pins. All I'm going to do is use that piece to line up this piece of cork right here. Now all I do when I do cork is, I usually use white glue, but uh, I'm out right now, so I have no choice but to use Gorilla Glue. So I just, uh, you probably won't be able to see this because my hand's in the way. Um, I just lay a bead of glue down the back side of the the cork and uh, like I said I got one already key pinned in so it makes my job easier so I'm gonna move this switch out of the way so I don't glue it to the switch and all I do is flip this over line up my cork about where I want it slide it in a little bit of glue on the board ain't gonna hurt nothing i just line it right up against there and then i grab some t-pins this cork's a little bit more hardy than the cork i have um and i just keep it in here into my styrofoam top And then I let it dry. And then I just continue around on my pattern. Uh, got a little bit extra glue hanging out, but like I said, it really ain't gonna matter. It dries clear anyway, so uh, you know I can wipe it up if I want. But I really don't see any real use to doing that. Um, well, that's it for how I like cork. I'm not gonna do the whole thing right now. I just wanted to get this one piece set up so I can get my. Uh, my switching between the lines here done. Um, I got a new product I want to show you. Um, let me see if I can get... I'm actually going to pause the video and then I'm going to get ready and show you this new product. Okay, so here's the product I wanted to show you. This is uh, made by Hornby. This is called Semi-Flex. I'm sure you can see it's uh, already bent in an S shape and it holds its shape. This is really nice for when you're making an S curve because you don't have to sit there and mess with it. Um, it's really nice. Let me grab my other piece here because this one's already bent perfectly for where I want it. But now it's just a straight piece. Um, let's see if I can do this quick here. You can see, oops, shoot, I just snapped it off. Anyway, this all just snaps right back in if you actually make a mistake like that. But as you can see, it's kind of got a curve to it. Um, now, all I need to do is, okay, my wall here is pretty straight. So I'm just going to set it up against the wall. Snap, snap. Everything snaps right back into place. Perfectly straight piece of track again. But it's really nice where it holds its curve. And it does like to snap out every once in a while when you do it and ties uh, kind of look weird but you can go through and readjust everything and it looks really good and uh, it's actually double O but double O and HO as you know are both exactly the same width um, and like I said it is a Hornby product uh, as far as I know it is only sold in one place in the United States if you live in Canada or Europe you can get it from any Hornby dealer in Canada or Europe um, I'll, uh, the link should be at the bottom of the screen right now so if you're, you can go to that website, uh, the telephone number is on the website, the name of the, uh, the train shop is Model Trains Classics. Um, I go there all the time, I buy 90% of my stuff there. Um, they're really good, They Charlie's really into the Hornby stuff and like I said, it's really good stuff, I really like it. Uh, I've got, I don't have any Hornby trains, but I do actually, 
I have Hornby curves and uh, this flex track and excuse me for bouncing the camera um, anyway uh, that's pretty much it for this new flex here I'm going to show you how I uh, set that in next and then we'll be uh, ready to uh, lay some more track and uh, maybe we'll even throw a train on the track and show you how well it goes around these corners Okay, so our first step here in uh, getting the track ready to lay is I've already bent it, so it's all ready to go. Um, once again, I'm using the Hornby track. Um, this, the <clears throat> anyway, what I do to put, a lot of people, they will uh, like cut this tie right here off. I don't like doing it, it just, I don't know. I found a better way. I was watching a video. I don't remember whose video it was. But what the guy did is he come in here with the die grinder, or whatever you want to call it, um, and you just cut the little nubs off on the insides of the track. Now, I'm not going to do that on camera because this thing is loud as heck, and all you're going to hear is a bunch of grinding. So, But I'm going to just grind these little nubs off. I know they're really hard to see, but obviously if you look at track, you know what I'm talking about. It's the exact same as any other flex track. It's just a little nub that holds the track in there. They're kind of like supposed to be the track spikes. Um, so uh, I'm going to grind these off and uh, I'll uh, show you how I lay them in the next video. Okay, um, well I've already actually started on this a little bit. First thing I do here is get these engines out of the way so they don't get glue on them. Um, is I like to paint my cork. That way, if you don't see, you know, stuff's not sitting down right, whatever, my cork's already gray. I'm using gray and black. I'm using a mix of gray and black ballast when I do ballast the tracks. Um, but this works really well painting up. The cork likes takes paint just fine. Um, the one thing I do do is, I don't know if you can see right here, but there's uh, meetings of the of the cork. I take sandpaper, uh, I believe it's uh, 200 grit that I'm using, and I sand these down so they're smooth, so you don't get no hump and bump in the track. Okay, so we're just going to take our track, make sure one last time that we're still lined up, and it is. Like I said, this is the beauty about this Hornby track. You can just, you don't have to sit and fight with it to do anything. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go from about here up to three feet, wherever that ends up being. Um, what I like to do is I just run a bead of glue down the middle. Now, you kinda wanna go a little bit shorter here, three feet, because you're gonna have extra glue. Um, let's see, I want it to be I'm a little bit over, but that's okay, it'll just dry up. I have a putty knife here. What I, I like to thin this glue out because you don't want it coming up through the tracks. Um, like I said, this stuff dries clear, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, anyway, I just uh, spread it out. Make sure you get it pretty much everywhere on the cork. Got a little spot here I can use a little extra glue, I guess. Like I said, you don't want it coming up through the ties. I mean, yeah, your uh, ballast will cover it, but I don't, I don't know. I just don't like to. I like to be picky, I guess. I just need a little more glue there. And... Pretty much, that's it. I just bought out of glue here, so. So we're just gonna bring our track that we've already bent back into place here. We're just gonna set it down into the glue. And then what I do is I grip, you don't have to do this if you don't want to obviously, but I'm just showing you what I do. I put some T-pins in just to hold it in place. Uh, and that you can double check your uh, your alignment on your track that way too because you 
You see that you're right in the center with that hole, which I wasn't exactly, but I probably bumped my track a little bit. Mm -hmm. Find a hole here. <laughs> but anyway, you get the idea. And uh, as soon as this dries, I will uh, put in another section of track and uh, I'll just keep going. Uh, as soon as I get the computer out of the room, uh, we'll uh, finish uh, putting our cloth on the, on the risers. Uh, I'm going to try something a little bit different in the back part with the risers, but because uh, that's actually going to be a sure face. Uh, and I'm just going to put stone right directly onto it. Um, this turned out really nice. This is just kind of a test idea, and uh, I tried it with the. See if I can get the picture here. Um, the blue paper. I tried putting it up there, and it works. But as soon as I went to adjust the table to make sure it was all level, it kind of made my paper go all weird. But I'm going to leave what's up up right now so that I can finish painting my ground cover color. Um, probably have another video up sometime next week when I get some when my cloth comes in. I think it's supposed to be here like Tuesday or Wednesday from Woodland Scenics. Uh, and they're saying now that the better way to do this is to spray it with a spray bottle after you got it laying out. So we're going to give that a try, see how that works. And we'll see you in the next video.